In this video, I will talk about the law molecular weight happens and I will discuss topics like the pharmacokinetics of these medications, the mechanism of action, the therapeutic uses, monitoring for therapeutic effects and the adverse effects and the contraindications. So the law molecular weight happens are classified as anticoagulant medications and the low molecular weight heparins are derived from the unfractionated heparin which is a mixture of different molecular weight fractions from 5000 to 40,000 daltons and those can work on multiple coagulation factors and produce multiple side effects such as the thrombocytopenia. The low molecular weight heparins, on the other hand, are fractions of the unfractionated heparin that work on factor 10 only. And the molecular weight of these fractions is less than 8,000 daltons, and this would lead to minimal effects on the platelet and other clotting factors. So basically, the low molecular weight heparins are fractions of the unfractionated heparin and this will make the low molecular weight heparins specific to factor 10 and will make them having better side effect profile than the unfractionated heparin does. Examples of these medications include the daltiparin and the anoxiparin. The anoxiparin have many different trade names such as the Lovonex and the Clexan and both of those trade names are highly famous and they are used a lot in hospitals. This picture shows a pre-filled syringe of the Clexan, which is the anoxiparin. Now let's mention some points about the pharmacokinetics of these medications. So the low molecular weight heparins are available as subcutaneous formulations and the subcutaneous bioavailability of these medications is better than the unfractionated heparin subcutaneous bioavailability. That is because the unfractionated heparin binds to subcutaneous tissue more than the low molecular weight heparin does. And this will lead to the bioavailability of the unfractionated heparin being lower than the bioavailability of the low molecular weight heparins. And the half-life of this medication is long enough to allow for once daily dosing while if we compare it with the unfractionated heparin half-life the unfractionated heparin half-life is short that is why it is given three times daily now let's talk about the mechanism of action of these medications so the low molecular weight heparins bind to antithrombin 3 and activate it to inhibit the activated form of factor 10. Now, the antithrombin 3 is a natural clotting inhibitor available in the blood plasma. And the antithrombin 3, when activated, it work on multiple clotting factors. But in case when the low molecular weight happens bind to it, it work only on factor 10. So when it get activated by the low molecular weight happens, it inhibits factor 10 only and on this picture here we have the clotting cascade and as we can see we have the extrinsic pathway and the intrinsic pathway and both would lead to the activation of factor 10 here and then the activation of factor 2 then factor 1 so the low molecular weight heparins work to inhibit the activated form of factor 10 here and it would stop the coagulation cascade here and this will lead to its anticoagulant effect. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of these medications. So they are used in the prophylaxis against the deep vein thrombosis in medium and high risk groups for deep vein thrombosis. And they are used in the treatment of venous thromboembolism in pregnancy. And they are used in treatment of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism and in treatment of ST elevation 
myocardial infarction. They are also used in treatment of unstable angina and in prevention of clotting in extracorporeal circuits. Now, the effect of these medications doesn't require monitoring, but if needed, in patients at extremes of weight or in renal dysfunction, so in these patients' groups, they would need monitoring of the low molecular weight heparin effects, and it is done by the anti-factor 10A assay. And if we compare it to the unfractionated heparin, the unfractionated heparin need continuous monitoring with the APTT. Moving on to talk about the adverse effects. So one of the dangerous adverse effects is bleeding and bleeding could be a minor bleeding or it could be a major bleeding like intracranial hemorrhage and the risk for bleeding with the low molecular weight heparin is much less compared to the unfractionated heparin. That is why the low molecular weight heparin doesn't require monitoring except in special patient populations. Now, they also may lead to heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, but this is much less common in low molecular weight heparins compared to the unfractionated heparin. And they also may lead to osteoporosis and spontaneous fractures, especially on long-term use. They may also lead to hypersensitivity reactions and hypoaldosteronism. Now, the antidote for the low molecular weight heparin is the brotamine, and it is the same antidote for the unfractionated heparin, except it is action is much weaker on the low molecular weight heparin in comparison with the unfractionated heparin. So if the patient is having toxicity with the low molecular weight heparin, we could still use the protamine, but it is much less effective. Finally, let's talk about the contraindications. So contraindications include trauma, hemorrhagic disorders, peptic ulcer disease, recent cerebral hemorrhage, severe hypertension, recent surgery to the eye or to the brain, and all of these contraindications because there is a high risk of bleeding. But we also have another contraindication, which is in case of history of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe.